Some people call it a tapestry, other people call it a quilt. They're totally incorrect, it's an embroidery, thread stitched onto fabric. I'm Eleanor Taylor, ex-art and craft teacher, instigator, facilitator, coordinator of the Cardinian Embroidery. The stitches are invisible, aren't they? Look, absolutely. They can't see a thing. Good. <laughs> the Cardinian Embroidery was done in the community, by the community, for the community, back in 2004, 5 and 6. I've lived in Cardinia Shire almost all my life. Grew up Garfield North, Beaconsfield, and since I married I've been living in Upper Beaconsfield. Cardinia Shire is roughly an oval. The top is all hills, the highway and the railway line cross the middle, and the swamp down below. So flatlanders and hillbillies, totally different types of people. I reckon I'm in between, because I grew up all the way along the highway in the middle, so I have bits of each. The original idea was to embroider places of local significance all through the Shire of Cardinia. War memorials, football grounds, scout halls, general community places, empty space at the top, and then the skyline so that the swamp dwellers could have their flat level horizon and the hillbillies could have their hills. And that would show the difference between the two halves of the Shire. Then um, we would have a few places of local significance, perhaps five or six. Well, it didn't happen. Now, that looks pretty silly, sitting there with a different ground level, so it will have to have tree or shrub or something in between. But I can just squeeze in the two churches. We started with, I think it was 39 people to start off with. The mailing list went up to over 300 within six months. That's people who came along to workshops or people who were brought by their sisters or cousins or neighbours or whoever. Where I couldn't get anyone from different areas to actually sow the places of significance from those areas, like Kuirup, I think it was the second largest town after Pakenham in the Shire, and Emerald, which is large also, I couldn't get anyone. So I had people from Pakenham bringing their cousin who would say, oh, my mother grew up in Cardinia Shire. I'll do two embroideries from Emerald or Kurirup if you put in the house she grew up in. And that's why the embroidery just grew and grew and grew. And the more people we got, the more requests we got. The workshops were mainly to get people interested, involved and ready to take the stuff home to sew it. Also to meet up with people. Now it was a social activity after all. This is the annoying bit. Well I never take mine apart. Which side do you trace? Trace on the paper side. But you have to do it back to front. Embroidery is like painting. Stranded cotton comes in six strands, so you could use a single strand for a very, very fine, delicate detail, or you could use two or four or six for thicker, darker colours, and you could vary the tone to gradually fade out the colour. There's two different types of cross-stitch embroidery we use. One is black work, which is like a pencil drawing compared to a cross-stitch, which is like a, a painting. We used both, mainly because I got a bit lazy towards the end of doing all the cross-stitch kits and decided it was much easier to do black work once. And people liked stitching them as well. Mm -hmm. 
getting people to finish things and hand them in on time. That was really difficult. It was just like I'd never retired at all. Wendy's done the shops, she's working on the hall. We'd started putting all the panels together and putting all the embroideries down and there were still embroideries turning up for people who'd just finished doing it two years after they'd got the kit. That was a bit of a hassle. That's where the facing is going to be stitched on or binding or whatever. So that needs to go into the facing. I, mean, I didn't think I'd be able to talk a whole lot of people into working on one project. I just did not have any idea I was going to be able to do that, but I just steamrolled through them all and we did it. We finished putting it all together. July the 28th of 2006, I did some guided tours of the embroidery. The first few years it was up in the cultural centre and the general opinion was awe and wonder. <laughs> Drawings and embroideries and paintings remind people of things from their childhood. Oh, I remember that place. Oh, that's been knocked down now, hasn't it? That's been the major reaction. What I can see when I look at the embroideries is about four or five years of very hard work. <laughs> but it is worth it. Now there's people from everywhere living in Pakenham and I would like very much to do a multicultural one and get people from all those different communities to put in their bits. But I'm too old now. I'm not going to do anything else like this again. <laughs>